Venus trines Mars on January 9th at 10.21 a.m. This one has the power to ignite passion in our hearts and gift us with more charm and appeal. It's perfect for leading, dating, negotiating, making love and art. Let's take a closer look. My name is Anastasia, I'm a traditional Western astrologer specializing in natal relationship and predictive astrology. If you'd like to work with me, there are links down below. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe, leave me a like or a comment. I appreciate all the interactions I have with you guys and I appreciate the love in the comments. I did a video with Rox recently and the comments were so wonderful, like I cannot wait to collaborate with her again. So thank you for that, thank you for positivity. Uh, before I talk about this transit, until January 31st, I am doing 2023 personal horoscopes. You can get a live reading with me with $23 off using the coupon code 2023. So that comes down to 172, I believe. Or you can buy a recorded reading in the shop section of my website, AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com for 149. So take advantage of the special, it's not gonna last forever, it ends on January 31st. So what is Venus, what is Mars? Venus represents things we desire. Venus represents harmony, joy, and beauty, and kind of ease and accord in life. You put it together with Mars, and Mars is the active energy. Mars is passion, Mars is courage and bravery. So you get this beautiful energy of like, this is what I want and I'm gonna go after it, but you're doing that in a charming and, and non-threatening way because these two are in a harmonious aspect with, with one another. Traditionally, Venus has been the lover, Mars has been the fighter. So this is the moment when the lover and the fighter meet and create sparks, right? You can use sparks for your romantic relationship or the sparks can produce inspiration, new art projects or a collaboration. Granted, Mars is still retrograde, so I wouldn't say this is particularly a great time to like start a creative project. You can, but you know, Mars is retrograde, Mercury is retrograde until the 18th of January, we are in the quieter part of the month. But pursuing the existing projects, writing another chapter of your book, going on a date with someone you've already dated in the, in the past or dating right now, this could be great. Like I said, trines are of the nature of Jupiter, so they are harmonious. They represent ease and flow and kind of um, equanimity, I think is the word that I've been thinking about. Um, what can we expect, right? Some of the things that we can expect uh, flirt, flirting, right? Flirtatious energy. Both of these are in air signs. Venus is currently in Aquarius. Mars is in Gemini. So dirty talk, sexy talk can be in the air a lot more. And if you've already be, been feeling this or anything that I'm about to describe, let me know. There is an ability to be passionate, but there's also kind of this very rational side to it all because both planets are in air signs so you're level-headed you're not necessarily losing yourself in things and that's also part of having a harmonious trine aspect between the two of them you are more able to navigate it with ease there is it's a great energy like i said for dating because you are more able to attract you're more attractive you have this great balance between yin feminine energy and young masculine energy, right? We, we all have it regardless of whether you ident identify as a male or a female or, um, you know, other things. There is definitely, there's definitely ability to, to even, you know, you might even be, this might even be a great transit for friendship. Like maybe you, meet someone and it doesn't necessarily maybe you're not interested in a relationship so you start a friendship um lovely for presenting your ideas in front of other people this has classically been like a very strong transit for leadership you are because of that charisma that you have you're able to inspire other people get other people to support your work so if you need to 
speak in front of other people, if you need to speak, give like some kind of, I don't know, present a project in school or speak in front of your bosses, this could be a good time. And the, so this is the ninth, so it's Monday, right? Like a good, good day to be presenting work and have that charm that you get with this transit. If you've been dealing with any difficulty in a relationship, this would mark a perfect occasion to talk it out and mend any problems and find peace. This is a very creatively stimulating transit. You might just enjoy, you might like have a desire to go dance or go paint or, you know, um, redecorate the space you're in because it's it's like creativity but it's active of course any creativity is active right but there might be more of a desire to move your body like move the furniture around dance paint anything like that shopping could be a good time to go shopping you may be blessed with unique taste and unique ability to use color and shape and form so I'm going to do a quick rundown for all 12 signs as per usual to see where these energy will be most strong for you and to see what possible blessings they can bring you. For Aries rising, Venus in the 11th will try Mars in the 3rd. So here we're connecting the house of friendships and networks with the house of neighborhood, community, transportation, tech. So 11th house also deals with social media. So this could be great for social media, presenting your work, something you've been working on for a while. Maybe it's an Instagram post, maybe it's a video you've been messing with. So great day to post it. And it might also be a lovely opportunity to go out with your friends. Maybe even on Sunday, right? Because Monday night, not a lot of people go out. But if you do, you might have a good time. Making friends with neighbors, meeting someone, in the neighborhood or being introduced to someone by a friend could also be great or even meeting someone online meeting someone through online dating if you are an aries rising and you're looking to date i would recommend that and if you're in a relationship maybe it's a lovely opportunity to go out with your partner find a small bar with some live music and just have fun for taurus rising venus in the 10th house, we'll try Mars in the second house. And here we get two professional houses highlighted. So this could be very much professionally driven transit for you. You may feel a strike of inspiration. Maybe there's a new project, a new opportunity to be creative and get rewarded for it. There might be some kind of like energy when it comes to competitive money making. But once again, because it's a happier transit, you are... Um, not threatening right like you're making money and other people are more likely to buy what you're selling even if what you're selling is maybe the services you provide right there may be more recognition for the work that you're doing and more financial gains when it comes to the work that you're doing for gemini rising venus in the ninth house will try mars in the first house here we are connecting the house of identity, your physical body, your independence with the house of travel, education, legal matters. So you may hear good news when it comes to legal matters. Let's say you've been waiting to get a visa for a trip to Europe, like you're planning to go to Europe for three months. And this might be the time when you hear it, when you hear good news. Ninth house also deals with education so maybe there are some kind of opportunities to teach or to study. A great time to present your ideas to mentors or teachers or potential students. You have like, you know, I've been saying you have that charm and that it factor. Getting recognition for your projects, let's say publishing your work could figure around this time, getting good grades if you're in school, and maybe even romancing a teacher <laughs> I don't know, um, let's say like, or a classmate, there might be something like that. So for Cancer Rising, Venus will be in the 8th house, joining Mars in the 12th house. Here you're connecting two houses of like hidden things. So you're having fun, but in private, behind closed doors. These houses deal with healing, 
Um, so you may get an opportunity, you may sort of get like a download or an insight about how you are standing in your way, how are you blocking your progress and your growth in life. And eighth house also deals with financial gains, but because these are like secret hidden houses, you may be paying off a debt, but doing so quietly. Maybe you have like a sugar daddy. <laughs> I can't I can't help it you know it's a very it's a very passionate transit so like even when you're talking about the houses that are less so connected to romance it's hard not to make it about romance but you may be getting in some kind of you may be getting some kind of financial bonus from like a hidden secret source and maybe dating someone but I would watch out over here because this can easily spell out drama, dating people in relationships, getting involved with someone who's not right for you. So be careful that you're not just, you know, following passion and throwing the rationale out the window. For Leo rising, Venus is in the seventh house, joining Mars in the 11th house. This could be very romantic in terms of moving a friendship, turning a friendship into a relationship. This could also be an opportunity coming from a friend, like a creative collaboration with a friend. Um, hearing good news when it comes to some kind of project that involves the larger world, that puts you in front of other people, and just a, ge a general kind of like having fun with friends. Maybe you go on a date, maybe you go to a concert together with your friends. This could be like a lovely opportunity to unwind and have fun. And I would also give this transit, you know, a day before, let's say a couple of days before, a couple of days, a couple of days after. For Virgo rising, Venus in the sixth house is going to try Mars in the 10th. Another example of a very professional energy because Venus is in the sixth, encouraging you to address your health matters, take good care of yourself, maybe reinvent the way you do work, try to find more creativity in your everyday life. And connect with colleagues. Venus in the sixth house would also potentially encourage you to befriend colleagues. So here you can see great energy flow between professional aspirations and the opportunities you have at hand. Maybe a great time to go out with your colleagues, maybe some type of recognition. Dating romance at work is more likely at this time for Virgo risings. So be on the lookout or be careful if that's not, not something you want to engage in. For Libra rising, Venus is in the fifth house, the house joy for Venus, trining Mars in the ninth house. And so here we're connecting the house of pleasure and fun and sex and joy with a house of education, travel, philosophy, religion, publishing. So on a creative level, you might be presenting your work and getting great results. On a romantic level, I can also see this as you're going on a trip with your partner, even going to a museum, having some kind of fun date where you learn new things. Or you may also be like hooking up or dating someone foreign because Mars is in the ninth house. They could be foreign or they could be like a classmate as well. So have fun, Libra Risings <laughs> and all the other Risings. For Scorpio Rising, Venus is currently in the fourth house and is going to try Mars in the eighth. This could bring positive financial changes. You may be paying off a debt or investing into a home, maybe paying off a mortgage, maybe like closing some kind of debt you had. There may be gains coming to you from family, like maybe the reason why you're paying off this debt is because family is helping you out. And it's also likely for Scorpio Risings that like if you're having fun, it's either related to your family, like spending time with family, connecting with them, having a good time, or you may have a romantic experience, but it's like behind closed doors in the comfort of your own home. Could be also a great time to transform your home and maybe make some changes that are fun and artistic and inspired. For Sagittarius rising, we have Venus in the third house, training Mars in the seventh. Another example of like a really strong romantic energy. Venus is in the third. It's the house of 
neighbors, the house of neighborhood, your local hangouts, and Mars is in the seventh house of relationships. So a great opportunity to go on a date in your neighborhood, maybe have um, a good time. It's also, this is also a creative house. So third house deals with skills and hobbies and passions we have, writing. So you may be getting kind of good results or starting a creative partnership around this time as well. For Capricorn rising, Venus in the second house trines Mars in the sixth. So Venus in the second, Mars in the sixth. For all earth signs, earth rising signs, there is more professional vibes. You can still have a good time. It can still be romantic, but it feels more like maybe you're getting a reward for the work that you've done. Maybe you're getting some sort of recognition, feeling a sense of accomplishment. You may also be dating someone from work with this placement or having kind of connecting with people you work with on a different level and having a good time. If you are looking for a raise or if you're looking for support for people to kind of encourage your work, this might be a lovely time to ask for a raise or reach out to people for work. For Aqua Rising, Venus in the first house trines Mars in the fifth house. Venus in the first gives you the most charm, as much charm as possible. So you are beautiful, you are attractive, you're magnetic, magnetic both romantically because Mars is in your fifth house. So great time to draw someone in, go on a date, have a passionate night with your partner. But it can also be a really great time for having fun with your child, like having a moment of like, you know, soulful connection where you see yourself in them or you see like a true spark of intimacy and closeness. As well as creatively, this could be a powerful transit because Venus is in your first house, wants to create and express herself and then it's aspecting Mars in the fifth house, which is all about art and, you know, fun. So yeah, it could be a great time to do some inspired artistic work or just dance. Yeah, dance and create and have fun. Finally, for Pisces Risings, Venus is in the 12th house, training Jupiter in the fourth. And here your Venus is in the private sector. It's sort of behind closed doors and you may have some fun with your partner behind closed doors, right? Kind of like more quiet example of passion, or at least just, you know, you're hanging out at home. There still could be a lot of passion and it could be connected to healing. It could be connected to letting something go, releasing old wounds, realizing how maybe you've had or still have some kind of self-defeating tendencies and letting them go so that you can um, experience more alignment and more peace and more joy. So this is it. Enjoy this transit. It's a fun one. My personal, one of my personal favorites this month, and I hope it's lovely. It was a pleasure talking to you.